real estate deal, like how you structure a deal is such an art form because people get so creative. You don't, you don't need a lot of money. Like if you find the deals and you do it right, um, obviously everyone should start with like reading rich dad, poor dad. Uh, then you should start learning about wholesaling. Then you should learn about flipping. Then you should learn about like multifamily. And then like, you should just keep going and going and going like real estate's all knowledge. This is the Real Talk University podcast, where your hosts, Andre and Christian, explore success stories outside of the classroom. For our listeners out there, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Yeah, man. So I am a uh, I'm a 25 year old serial entrepreneur. My name is Brody Kern. I have, in the last three and a half, four years, started three, about to be four, multiple six figure businesses. Um, the, really the meat of my story starts with my past with addiction I was basically dead at 21 from drugs and alcohol. And, uh, that's a real, my sobriety and my, you know, the impact I'm trying to make in the world of addiction and just on young people in general is a very, very big part of what I do. Um, really my, I, I, I like to say, you know, so I, this podcast, every podcast I go on social media, it's all wrapped up in this young social media entrepreneurship space, right? Um, and I, I like to say that I'm not a uh, an entrepreneurship guy. I'm a, I'm a self-transformation guy who happens to be an entrepreneur. Um, self-transformation is really where my passion lies. It's where I think the true focus and success for all business people needs to be. Um, and that's really what I like to preach. Yeah, definitely. Could you just like kind of go into the four businesses that you were describing earlier about how you had obviously four six figure businesses just for our audience yeah absolutely so um you, you know i i left call my junior year of college to go to rehab i was going to school at the university of missouri my life had taken a very very bad turn over the last you know three years and uh you, you know i was ending up in the hospital all the time um overdoses whatever it may accidents whatever it may be and um you know, so I, I go to rehab and I start to gain a little bit of clarity there. And I, it became very clear to me, number one, that I was I was not supposed to go back to school. It was just not the spot for me. I was really just going to school to live the fraternity life, party, drink, do drugs, whatever, right? And uh, then it, what else was clear is that I was never really going to be able to work for anyone else. Now, you know, not to say that I never tried that. I did have some short periods where I went and I learned from some other individuals. But I got out of rehab and I was serving tables at this, this pizza place. And I'm like, what the fuck do I do, man? I, I knew that I was, uh, I knew that I was ambitious. <clears throat> I knew that I had these goals. I didn't really know what I was capable of at that time, but I, there was something inside of me wanting to go right. And <clears throat> excuse me. So I had a buddy who was in real estate. He was in commercial real estate and he's like, dude, why don't you get into real estate? Right. There's a low barrier to entry. And all you had to do was take a class and pass a test. And I thought, man, I could probably do that. Right. Like, you know, I'm not brain i'm not brain dead i just used to be an alcoholic like i can probably handle this and uh so i went i got my real estate license and i did very well right I, so my first year i think i sold 46 homes between april and november uh so I, I just exploded took off very very quickly i was working um under another agent at the time trying to learn the business and i was just crushing it right but i never was super passionate about real estate and um so I, I ended up like building out a team still involved in real estate to this day, but uh, it, it takes up a lot less of my time. Now I'm kind of leveraged out because, you know, just something about residential real estate that wasn't a passion for me. I just personally don't like dealing with the emotion of it, but real estate was a great vehicle for me. It was a great place to start. I'm passionate about it because it was the vehicle that took my life from, uh, from shitty to not shitty. And for that, I am super grateful. Um, I also invest in a little bit of real estate now. But then, so, you know, I took a break from real estate and one of my very first mentors was in the call center space. I met him through Alcoholics Anonymous where I got sober and he, I was always really fascinated by him and what he did. And he uh, was really, really good in this space. And I, you know, I just, I decided to kind of kind of dabble into it and play play ball in the call center space. And I ended up making a pretty good chunk of change that I got out of the call center space earlier this year. I was doing lead generation for a number of different verticals, um, you know, a little bit of solar, a little bit of mortgage. We had done some other stuff. Um, but that ultimately that business is a very high stress business. A lot of people in it are, you know, relatively negative. And on the, my wife and I had just had a child 10 weeks ago. And on the eve of having a baby, I wanted to purge all negativity from my life. So I walked away from that industry. Um, around the same time that I got into call centers, 
I got into the payment processing space. So merch, I don't know how familiar you guys are with merchant accounts, but uh, you know, so like Stripe came in, took all the low hanging fruit for people who need to process payments, right? Well, there's people who um, due to chargebacks or what industry they're in, Stripe doesn't really want to mess with them. Um, and then there's what are called high risk merchant accounts. And I provide, the, I started providing those just kind of hooking people up with a guy I knew I was getting residual income from it and then started to take a little bit more of my focus. And, uh, you know, those, those were the three, man, those were my three vehicles. The, all right. I'm just going to ask you a quick question before Christian goes back in about, um, your call center experience. Do you think mm -hmm. like that early on sales experience, even though like you weren't passionate about it, do you think that like helped you at all in selling real estate and in, in the further careers you went into? Um, you know, that's a good question. That's a good question. Phone sales, you know, I learned most of my phone sales whenever um, I was in real estate, whenever I first started in real estate, right? Just calling for sale by owners, expired listings, getting that. I was always super high energy. Like, I'm just like one of the most persistent people I know, even if I'm just like trying to get a hold of a buddy, like all my friends get so annoyed or people that are in my life. I don't care who you are. I'll call you till you answer. Like I'll fucking double, triple call you. Like, if I, if I, if I need to get a hold of you, I'm getting a hold of you. And that's always I'm the how same way. That's always how I've been, dude. And you know, so like, and then whenever I was in the call center space, I was more or less connecting people and uh, working on the business than if I ever was spending time selling. But uh, you know, tons of sales experience in, in real estate that I learned um, growing up. I I did like some door to door sales jobs selling, you know, bathroom remodels. I did all sorts of like random different sales gigs that I liked. I always knew that I was a salesperson, um, and that's really where I, I, I learned that was real estate. But I mean, that's a great question. Definitely. Uh, just kind of off. I was noticing um, the hoodie you're wearing. Is that part of your merch? Like this is kind of off topic, but it's, I love that design on your shirt. I was no, so th this is actually, uh, this is actually from Gerard Adams, Leaders Create Leaders merch. Shout okay, out. It looks shout out to Gerard. Check it out. I definitely like that for sure. Okay. So moving on. Um, I know you mentioned that you were working in a pizza shop and you kind of were wondering what the hell you're doing, but, was there like a specific moment where you realized, damn, I want to be an entrepreneur? Well, <clears throat> kind of, man. Okay, so like here's what happened. I I got into real estate and I thought like I didn't realize that like I could impact people on a national scale or a global scale. Like I didn't know that that was really in the picture at that point. So like I grew up in Missouri, dude. Like if it, living in the Midwest, you make $100,000, like you're on top of the world, right? So like – that was all I ever wanted was just like to make $100,000, live in Missouri, thought it'd be fine, right? Um, thought that would make me happy. And so I did that really young. I did that my first, you know, like my first whole months in real estate. And uh, then it just nothing, I didn't feel any better. And I was, I was confused. So, you know, then even when I got into the other business, I wasn't even really looking at, like, I was just hustling, trying to make money. I didn't, I wasn't on social media too. Like I had a Facebook or whatever, but dude, I didn't have an Instagram. Like I, I was so behind the game. I didn't know what was good with Instagram. Like I've been, so I've been on Instagram now for maybe 16 or 17 months. Not, th not that long. And yeah, uh, so I didn't know, fun. right. I didn't know that this social media, I didn't know that entrepreneurship was sexy and this whole thing was <laughs> going on. Right. Like I didn't know any of that. So I, I was just more or less being an entrepreneur because I, I had no other option, right? I knew that I couldn't go work for someone and I had to make money, right? And I, and I had all this energy. So like I was being an entrepreneur because I, I did not see any other path for me. But it, I, whenever I realized like, hey man, I can do this entrepreneurship thing the way that everybody else sees it, probably wasn't until I got onto Instagram and was like, I think that my personality is polarizing enough for people to listen and I actually have a desire to impact people. And I found that I found my why because building all of these vehicles, making money that I wanted to make, I thought, you know, that would make me happy. And it didn't. I say that I had my midlife crisis at like 22 because I was just like, what the, what's the, why am I here? Right. What's the purpose of all this? And so I started really digging down and like doing introspection and figuring out where I was fulfilled. Right. And I noticed that I was pretty fulfilled whenever I was working with other young alcoholics to achieve sobriety. Um, and then, so like I got that feeling of like wanting to work with other individuals. Right. And then, so I, I tried all sorts of different things like, God, I've actually never told this story. Um, I, I went 
And I wanted to just like get out of self and give back. And I went to Big Brother, Big Sister, right? And I was gonna like try to do a lot of work there. I was all gung-ho about it. I'm like, I can really impact like some kids' lives, right? And uh, you know, I'm a super honest person. Like they're like going through this questionnaire. They were all excited about me. They're like, you're a great dude, business person. Like we're really excited to have you on. And then they're like, have you had any substance abuse problems in the last five years? And I'm like, uh, well, yeah, I'm a fucking, you know, recovering alcoholic addict. And they're like, how much, you know, clean time do you have? And I was a couple of years, you know, and, uh, they had to turn me away. And that was a really, really humbling experience. It kind of fucked me up for a little while. I was like, I had this eat, my ego was pissed. I was hurt. Like I, I, I was like, okay, what, I, you know, I just wanted to help at that point. Um, Damn, weird thinking about that. I've never, I haven't talked about that in a while. Um, you know, so then I was like, all right, where else can I, where else can I get out of self? So I started like, you know, just talking to more people on social media, more or less like engaging with people in the DMs and shit rather than just like posting sh- stuff, you know, because now like you'll see like some of my content looks good. Dude, I grew and this is why I'm really proud of what I've done on Instagram. I straight up grew in the hardest time to grow on shitty looking content. It was literally just me on my phone, like <laughs> before, recording shit. You know what I mean? And I grew, I grew. So like, I'm super proud of that, but it wasn't in, like, that's how I found it, dude. Cause then I was like, oh, I get a similar fulfillment that I do from working with alcoholics when I work with entrepreneurs on their, when I work on self-transformation and I really only like entrepreneurs because they're the guys who are exposed to personal development. You don't really talk to a sales guy at a corporate gig or a fucking finance guy. And they're like, yeah, you know, I I love personal development. Like that shit, they want to talk about 401ks and shit. Like, I just don't care. Exactly. That's, that's how it is at college. And that's kind of the inspiration we had behind this podcast. Like there's no really self-development like aspect behind you know just your regular college courses right right dude i mean they don't fucking teach a thing it's nuts (laughs) that's why there's real talk university (laughs) that's why we started this podcast mainly but i just want to go back to instagram i was just wondering since you've like kind of started your own instagram page how have you grown as a result of that so it you know I, i it became clear to me that it was not as easy as I anticipated it would be to grow on Instagram. And and then I started to learn about Instagram and how it was working and how things had worked over the last couple of years. And, you know, I came onto the scene right around some of the like detrimental algorithm changes that happened. But, you know, really what it comes down to is I, I became a very, I became an expert in Instagram analytics, what was going on. I befriended a couple growth hackers uh, you know, quote unquote, one used to work on Gary V's team. And I just, I just per like, just blasted their brain for knowledge, right? Like, how does this work? How are things changing? What are the new strategies to grow? So, I mean, I was growth hacking, like I grew, I grew a ton on, uh, viral videos. Uh, so I, I, I was literally a buddy of mine had the sauce. Like there was a little trick back then. This was like last early last year that could make videos go viral. Right. And so I could post a video of a Lamborghini and like I would do a million views, right? I would gain like six or seven in my account had 10,000, 20,000 followers. Right. And I was gaining like six or 700 followers a post. Wow. And I was posting three times a day. And so like I ran, I ran, that's just one example, right? Like I ran that strategy only really worked for like, two months. I ran that for like two months. Um, there's always just some little hack that people are doing right. And Instagram, like, I I don't care what anyone says, you can have the best message and you can have the best fucking looking content and everything. If you're not learning how to growth hack, you're not growing anymore. That's the truth. A hundred percent. Yeah. We actually just recently launched our Instagram, obviously to, you know, draw listeners to our podcast. Um, I think what sometime in November, and then, of course, like we weren't seeing growth. It wasn't helping that much. So I, I assigned our Twitter to Christian and then I took over the Instagram so that we could, you know, give as much attention as we could possible to growth. And since then, I think since after New Year's, we took it from like a thousand followers. We're at almost four and a half thousand. So we've been growing pretty good. Um, but, yeah, we're always, you know, learning new strategies, trying to come up with content that people will value and, you know, get a lot out of. So it's definitely totally. a grind, like you said, and it's just putting in the work and and reaching out to people that know what they're doing and found success themselves. 
Right. Well, the great thing for you guys is that, um, you know, with your podcast and you bringing on some decent guests, like collaboration there, like not everyone's going to repost like some like a, a little edit that you make of the podcast. But like I'm always down to, especially if I vibe with some young guys, I love seeing people get it. Like I'll post it. That'll help. Like collaboration will help you grow from the guys you're already having on. You know, like the social proof is there. 100 percent. Yeah, that's been yeah, a absolutely. huge. It's a huge method to grow. Uh, even like our last episode with Alex Martin. He has like a follower base of like 400,000 plus and him just posting it on his story drew a ton of listeners and people to our account. So definitely right. collaboration. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then I just have one more question before we switch uh, and then Andre asks his, but um, what advice, like I know you found your passion in helping other people and entrepreneurs, but what advice would you give to our listeners to help them kind of find their passions? You will find your passion in your insecurities and never heard that before that's that's huge well wow. you'll you'll find your passion in your insecurities and in suffering right like whether it's self-induced from external circumstances like if you even go and put yourself through like rigorous physical challenge you'll figure out who you are i think that's... christian could talk about that a little bit yeah with his own background <laughs> Uh, definitely. Um, I've, I used to be over, I used to be like 210 pounds and I kind of discovered a fitness gym that I really fell in love with and I'm down over 30 pounds and I've definitely changed my lifestyle. Um, I was going to ask you a question about physical fitness kind of also, like, how do you feel like fitness has helped you? Because I feel like when I go to work out every day and I, sometimes I don't want to, but I find the motivation to say, yep, I'm going to go, I'm going to do this. Even if I don't feel like it, it kind of translates to other parts of your life too. <clears throat> Totally does. And people are looking at things way too, uh, like they look at them in separate sectors. Like, you know, my company, we really break our, our coaching down into mind, body, spirit, business. But when it comes to like, and those are the four pillars that matter. But when it comes down to it, dude, it, it, it's only, it's only about two things. It's about discipline and it's about focus, right? Like, and so if, if you're showing up at the gym and you're going to do, you say you're going to do 20 minutes on the treadmill and you do 16, like, what do you think you're going to do when you're sitting down to make 50 sales calls? Guess what? You're going to make 30 and that yep. extra, that hundred thousand dollar deal that was on call 49, you know, like it, it, how you do one thing is how you do everything. You hear it. You hear that. You hear that it's cliche, like cliches fucking matter because they're the simple truths that people choose to overlook. And that is one of the most important ones. Like if you are le and I just realized this really recently in my, because I've always been a very intense dude, right? But physical fitness, I've always not been as in, as intense as I am in like the way that I use drugs and alcohol, the way that I am in business, the energy that I have when I speak. Um, and this year I decided that I'm getting into endurance sports because I think that those are the, the toughest motherfuckers on the planet mentally. Um, so I, I've been doing a lot of running. I got into cycling a couple of years ago uh, and I'm really just like, cracking the code more on this mental toughness deal and like i'm doing things that i never thought i could do and so whenever i figured out that i could push myself farther physically i'm like wow how much am i leaving on the table in my spirituality in my business like in my relationship right like what the fuck is really going on here definitely andre i'm, I'm gonna let you ask your three not, I'm not to mention like there is one thing i want to add there too like dude in business, you need to be confident. When you're fit as yeah. fuck, you're at your peak state, you're waking up and you're working out before your like competition even gets up, you're one motivated motherfucker because you're confident <laughs> as fuck. Like that's that's also an important piece to it. Like you just feel good, dude. Yeah. You're just like, yeah, what you said kind of just blew my mind. I'm just trying to reflect on it. So I'll just let Andre talk while <laughs> that's awesome this is a uh, totally like off topic but like the background you got with all these uh signs and art in the back like yeah. where did you get that from because uh christian and i are in the middle of putting together like a real studio and we're gonna try to do video calls like this more often so we're actually happy that you know you initiated a video call but like where could we find art like that for our studio yeah, so this is this is all from uh, this is all from iconic. I don't know if you guys know who they, yeah. they are. I know uh, yeah, the founder, so uh, Mark or Cole. I I just know of them. I don't know personally. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So uh, Mark and I both spoke at the same event a couple of weeks ago, and uh, probably a month ago. And I didn't. I had seen their obviously seen their ads. Like their stuff's cool, but you know I met him and he was a super rad dude. 
and I was like, you know, I want to, I want to support the team. And I, I bought a bunch of shit. Like, and, and it looks great, dude. I mean, there's, it, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what too. The quality is like 10 times nicer than I expected it to be. They have a really great, it, it makes sense to why they're killing it. That's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I know the story behind that. I see it, you know, all over social media, like you said. So we'll definitely look into that for our studio. Um, and then Christian and I, if, I mean, you definitely notice we're not together right now. Um, so right. we go to the same college, but we don't live like in the same city. So that's kind of why uh, we don't do like video interviews that often because we're in different places. But once the semester starts back up, we'll be together. We have the studio in the works at a local oh, business, gotcha. renting out like some space. Um, but I'm just going to jump topics here. Uh, I know you're huge into time management and things like that. So like what are what are some good time management skills that you, you would give to like college kids? Yeah. OK, so like. Time management is something I wish I would have learned in college and like really um, whenever I started managing multiple businesses, still trying to manage my health, work on myself, have a relationship like I, I realized that I was to just sucked ass at it. And um, because nobody had ever taught me, right, like I, I was just like running and gunning like all chaotic and shit and I had to figure out how to get the most out of my 24 hours. I would see dudes who just got done online who were more fit than me. They made more money than me. They were more spiritual than me, had better, obviously spent more time with their like fiance, girlfriend, wife, kids, whatever. Right. And I was like, I can barely fucking handle the businesses. Right. Like, how are those motherfuckers doing it? And I, I had to just be, I had to become a master. Like first, first off waking up early, right? Like, I knock out so much stuff before any of you guys wake up. It's nuts, right? That's important. Beat Stop. the sun, beat the sun up, beat your competition up, like beat everyone up and you will get shit done. Number one. Number two is time, like time blocking. You hear this is like another key cliche, but like your calendar, dude, like you should be like it, I call myself like the master of time blocking, literally. I don't know if anyone's better because like you, you got to number one, lay out all the things that you have to do, right? And you have to have a system and a, t a lot of time for when you're doing it. But then you also need to understand the psychology and like the state that you get into. So like if part of your day is a couple things are sales and marketing, right? And then part of your day is like operational stuff. You don't want to like have your time block like sales, operations, marketing, operations, sales, right? Like you need to have sales and marketing near the same thing because that's a similar state, right? Like it's all about state control and controlling your energy and being able to really like show up on a sales call when doing operational shit is a total fucking monotonous task for entrepreneurs. So that shit sucks, right? And so you don't want to do that and be bored out of your mind and then get on a sale. Like it's just, that's bad news. And so there's people out there who are time blocking, but they're really only halfway there. They're not looking at the psychology of how they work and adjusting it that way. So that's like, that's a great hack. And then another one is, do you, either of you know what the Pomodoro technique is? Nope. Nope. <laughs> so I, I, I love the Pomodoro technique and what it is, is, okay, so you have your time blocks, right? But when you're going, you break down work into 25 minute intervals. So I've just got a timer on my computer. So I, I, do, I do a 25 minutes of straight focus. And then a five minute break, 25 minutes, five minute break, 25 minutes, 10 minute break. And I just keep that cycle going because like it, it, let's say I have some lead generation blocked out the first two hours of my day. If you ask me, Hey, can you put, like completely focus for the next two hours? It's hard for me to legitimately answer yes. Right. But Hey, can you break it up and focus for the next 25 minutes? Fuck. Yeah. I can't all set my phone on the other side of the room. It's only 25 minutes, you know, yeah. like, and then you take your little break reset and then you do 25 minutes again. That's huge. So I just want to go That's back awesome. to your first point there about waking up early. So like, I'm just wondering what time you wake up at and also what are some morning routines? Because I actually just started, I uh, used to wake up at eight o'clock, which I thought was early, but obviously it's not. So these past, I think 10 days, I started waking up at six, which is still isn't that <laughs> early. But um, like I found that having goals and actionable plans to start as soon as you wake up and get out of bed has helped me to actually get out of bed and feel motivated to do so. So I don't know if you have any advice similar to that. I do. I like, I like 430. That's, that's the perfect, that's the perfect that time. Insane. That's the perfect time. And then, so, you know, like routines, there's, there, there's, there are a few components of an important morning routine. Uh, one is 
if you like if you're not a person who can work out in the morning and you like to get your workout in in the afternoon you at least need to do some like light stretching couple put you need to do something to elevate your heart rate right and just kind of center your body then the next thing is you need some sort of spiritual practice right like quiet i personally love meditation i think everybody should be meditating i meditate at least twice in the day right um I, I've meditated actually every day for like, I mean, I'm, I'm going for a full year straight. That's, that's what I'm doing. So I've, I've been crushing it. I started taking meditation very seriously last year, but, uh, so that's great. If, 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 um, you know, you're not exposed to meditation, literally some visualization, like sit down, visualize the best possible scenario for your day over the course of like 60 seconds. That's a great practice. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of journaling. And then I always recommend everybody plan their night their day out the night before because you know the brain only has a finite amount of decision making power each day right and you don't want to waste up good brain power figuring out what you have to do that day when you could have done it the night before um another thing is i recommend people do not check their email um until at least an hour into their day because like i used to wake up and check my email and immediately like get to work and start doing all this stuff and now like i really need time to get into peak state like i was talking about earlier peak like state control i need that time to get into that state because without it my entire day is just devoted to help like focusing that my email is someone else's agenda right my, I don't want my entire day to go to someone else's agenda. I want mine to go to mine and I want theirs to go to mine, motherfucker, right? Like, you, you know, like that's <laughs> – and so you have to get in that mindset, right? But a lot, of, a lot of a morning routine comes down to self-awareness too and what you need. So like me, my biggest character defect is that I don't – you know, and it has gotten better over time obviously and with things that have happened in my life. But like my biggest character defect is that I have this feeling much like many entrepreneurs do of not being enough. Right. So when you wake up, uh, let's say, you know, from a zero to 100 confidence level, sometimes you wake up at a 90, sometimes you wake up at a 60, sometimes you wake up at a 43, right? Like my, the goal purpose of my morning routine is for me to build confidence so that I'm at a fucking 99 when I sit down to crush my day every single day. So I literally have check boxes that I check off because each check is a mental win. Huge daily wins. That's that's another thing that a lot of people talk about. Um, and then are you like I'm sure you're familiar with Tony Robbins. Um, I've been trying out some of his morning routines. They seem to work pretty effectively. But I mean, they all align with the, what you. Yeah, do. no, to, to, Tony's uh, morning routine is great. So I actually, uh, for the last 45 seconds of my shower, I crank it to cold. Um, I, I I love that practice. I recommend that everyone do that. And for me, you know. Tony does it because there's a lot of health benefits with it, and I'll eventually have like a little – my wife and I are talking about building a home or getting a new one, and I'm going to get a little plunge tank like he has. But all sorts of health benefits, but for me, if for 45 seconds the only negative effect is that I'm cold and I can't <laughs> handle that, I'm not equipped to handle my day. Yeah, That's cold huge. showers are definitely huge. Um, I just have – like my sweet mate was big into all this. He recommended cold showers to me and meditation. Like what exactly do you do to meditate? So, I mean, when I started out, I just used the Headspace app, 10 minute guided meditations. Um, now I have, uh, you know, I have a device that measures my brain waves and I get a little more scientific with it and the data just so I can get better. But everyone should just download the Headspace app or the Calm app and uh, Calm, Stop, Breathe and Think and just try those out 10 minutes a day. Fuck it, five minutes a day if you can't do 10 minutes, like anything will help. Yeah, I, I've huge. got I've got my 14 year old brother meditating every day now, and he is like astonished at the results. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people talk about it. We definitely gotta try it out for sure. Um, so I, I mean, a lot of these questions weren't planned at all, which is great. Uh, and you're giving just so much great advice. So I'm just gonna go off tangent and ask you about goal setting. Another okay. huge thing. Another uh, thing that's helped me. And, you know, that a lot of people highlight. So do you, I mean, of course you set goals. So how do you go about setting your goals and what are some key components that go into that? Yeah. So here's a, here's a curveball for you. So a lot of people talk about goal setting. Sure. It's super important. Um, I set goals a couple times a year. I'm not big on like having my goals anywhere. And I'm about to tell you why, because like for me, I only set goals to reverse engineer my daily activities. If I start thinking about how much money I need to have made six months from now or whatever it is, right? Like I start stressing out. I, and 
I stayed, I stay sober one day at a time, right? Like even now after being sober for years, if I think about, oh, how am I going to stay sober for the next 10 years? Fucking stresses me out, right? I start being like, damn, I like could use a drink, you know, I, but I, I can stay sober today. Right. And I applied that to every area of my life. If I start thinking about what income goal I have this year kills me, dude, I start panicking and then I don't actually even get anything done. I literally wake up and I crush the next 24 hours in front of me. Like I was talking about with the Pomodoro technique, it's the same mindset. I can't tell you, hey, I'll fucking smash it every single day with full intensity for the next 365 days. Right. But I can do today and tomorrow I can wake up and I can say I can do today. Right. So I live by the 24 hours. That's huge. Yeah, I think I, I think that's that. really important. Um, one of our first interviews, um, his name was John Carlick. He said the same thing, like, because if you think so far ahead, like you're just going to stretch yourself out and you're just going to focus on the daily wins. So I really like that approach. Um, so w- what would you say is the best part of working for yourself? Oh, God. That is, uh, that's an interesting question. All, I mean, there's a lot of great things, dude. I mean, really, the, you know, just just freedom, not having to answer to anyone, ability to take risk. Uh, th- there's a ton of stuff. Um, I just like to highlight that this life's not easy, right? Like, after major successes in my life, I have still cried in my wife's arms over panic of what I was going to do. You know what I mean? Like, this life is always going to be hard. There's always going to be that next thing that just makes you want to fucking quit. And I have a real beef with social media right now about the state of what it has done with the image of entrepreneurship. Um, So I just like to say this shit sucks. But there are times where you live like a fucking king. There's There's no other option for me, but it's not for everyone. That's definitely great advice. Okay. So moving back to my um, set of questions here. Back to what you were saying about kind of trying to manage your business and your personal life. Do you really think that you could achieve a work-life balance maybe with the techniques that you were talking about? I mean, work-life balance is like a, a weird thing to me because like balance, having the mind of like an alcoholic and an addict is not something that I really uh, get down with. You know, I just don't understand it, but I do think that you can, I do think that you can achieve peak performance and peak state in all areas of life at the same time. Yes. If, if you have the right system. Definitely. And then, um, I'm not saying that anyone on here, hopefully listening is a drug addict or an alcoholic, but what advice would you have to give to them in order to help them kind of get out of the dark times? Yeah. So, you know, that's a, that's a tough question. And, and Really what it comes down to, and you know, I don't know if either of you have ever been around individuals who um, are addicts. Uh, definitely someone who is listening to this podcast has someone in their life who has um, at least probably five, right? Like addiction is everywhere. And what it comes down to is there's nothing I could say right now to an active alcoholic or an addict that would make them want to stop using drugs. They have to already want to stop using drugs or alcohol and want to know how, right? So like my biggest piece of advice is just like, fuck up faster, just get to rock bottom faster so that someone can help you, right? And like that's, unless you're talking to another addict, like that advice seems so fucked up, but uh, it's really the only way. That's definitely crazy. All right, moving into more, um... I don't know. I want to say more uh, happy topics here uh, for someone interested in real estate. What is like me and Andre, hopefully one day we will, like, we want to get started. What would you say is the best way to get started? I mean, cause obviously to me, it seems like you need a lot of capital to be able to start. So, right. So, I mean, dude, real estate is such a real estate deal. Like how you structure a deal is such an art form because people get so creative. You don't, you don't need a lot of money. Like if you find the deals and you do it right, um, obviously everyone should start with like reading rich dad, poor dad. Uh, then you should start learning about wholesaling. Then you should learn about flipping. Then you should learn about like multifamily. And then like, you should just keep going and going and going like real estate's all knowledge. If you don't see, like, if you like my knowledge of deal structure due to the people that I've surrounded myself with, if I talk to someone who 
only like kind of knows about flipping a home like i'm gonna see 15 angles that they don't see right like you need to understand you need to understand the financing you need to understand how deals work you need to understand where the money flows like you gotta you gotta see the whole picture to really win so just learn 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 and then be willing to take risk that's definitely awesome advice and andre and i always kind of preach that there's a ton of like free uh free knowledge out there in terms of ebooks and youtube videos and stuff so it definitely doesn't hurt to get started it is like I, I always say like I don't want to be the guy who takes people from zero to a hundred grand like YouTube c- can do that literally YouTube and rich dad poor dad can do that right and just a little bit of hustle right I want to be the people the guy who takes people from a hundred to five hundred or five hundred to a million for sure for sure Andre you uh you have three more right yep that's huge that's great advice so like what are some just little minute details here like effective habits to practice in real estate so maybe for some people that are you know already exposed to it doing some deals but aren't getting as much out of it as they want to um really what it comes down to and this is not so much as like a real estate answer but uh as an everything answer it's it's just discipline dude it's just literally crushing the 24 like when you lay your head down at night if you felt like you could have done more that day, you fucked up. And that's yeah, it. That's Just it. go all in. I don't care. I don't care if you're an insurance agent, a real estate agent, a fucking cashier. Like, check that shit fast, faster. You know what I mean? Like, if you lay down at night and you think you could have done better, you're fucking up. That's so true. A lot of people just really need to hear that. I think a lot of people are going to be inspired by just listening to a lot of your advice and what you went through. Um, So uh, just moving back to like one of the main topics of this podcast of self-education and just the importance of college. Like what what is your take on the, you know, importance of going out and getting a degree? Uh, I think it has no value um, if I'm being honest. I mean, unless you'd like just really want to be a fucking doctor or, a lawyer or an accountant but you know odds are there's not a lot of those guys listening to this podcast right like if you're just confused and you don't want to be one of those three things like or a fucking teacher or some shit like college probably isn't for you if you want to work for yourself college is not necessary at all like quit i'll say that totally i I love love without shame i love that (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's what needs to be said. Like, you just got to be honest, and I love that. That's how you're taking this. So, again, so just moving to a different point. Like, obviously, you have a good background with public speaking, and you know, a lot of people struggle getting into public speaking. They they have some fears. So, did you like have fears at first? And if you did, how did you overcome that to be as effective of a, of a speaker as you are today? So I really gained a lot of my public speaking skills whenever uh, whenever I was in high school. I was on the debate team. And, uh, I just, I saw people. And then, so I don't know how much, how familiar you guys are with the Myers-Briggs test. Um, it's a personality test and like, I'm, I'm literally classified. It's called an ENTP as the debater. Like I have always just loved the idea of mental sparring, right? Like nothing is better. I'll I'll take, I'll argue a point that I like, and I'll go into any argument objectively and argue a point that I don't believe in just because I love, I like the argument. Um, so whenever I found that there was a debate team in high school, I like really, really learned that art and I had to, I had to perfect my, my speaking skills. And sure, I used to get, I used to get nervous, especially, and like, I was always super good. Like I was good. The larger the crowd got, the more nervous I got, but, uh, you really just get good by, by doing it. Right. Like, and what it comes down to is being able to stay calm under pressure. If you panic you're fucked, right? And so how can you really get better at this, whether it's public speaking, whether it's talking to some girl, whether it's making a sales call, right? It's like, you have to figure out how to stay calm. Meditation, that's gonna help you in all those areas, right? Like staying calm under pressure, that's the that's the play. I definitely it's think here. that as much as you'd like, <clears throat> as anyone could give someone advice about that, I really think it just is up to them to take it upon themselves because me personally, like if I'm about to, I don't know, play a basketball game or speak in front of a ton of people, my heart starts racing. I get all anxious and I just, I can't reverse out of that. Like I'm stuck in that state until it's over with. So. Right. So find, and then another great practice is find other areas of your life that you, uh, that happens, right? So it's funny how things are, um, connected. So if you go like, let's say you really nailed 
the basketball one, right? The public speaking one is going to be better. Like I, I had one of my students, he is, uh, you know, he, he's at a job and he's trying to leave to start his own gig. And he, he like struggles with like some, you know, I, I made him do this uncomfortability challenge and I pulled it out of Tim Ferriss's four hour work week, but, uh, I, I made him go lay down for a minute in a, a crowded place, just lay on the ground. Right. I was like, go do that. And he videoed it, sent it to me. I've got a picture of him, like thumbs up from the ground in a crowded place. Right, right. He, he talks about it in there. And he he called me after and he's like, dude, I legitimately feel more willing to quit my job. Like, because I just went through that uncomfortability. It, it, like, I feel like grew. Right. So find other areas where you have that same panic and deal with those. And it'll help you deal with the ones that, you're, you know, the subject. That's awesome for sure. All right, so we're just going to conclude with a couple of quick questions here, just like bang out a few answers. We call it the lightning round. Okay. So first, what was your best purchase of $100 or less at any point in your life? Uh, I'm going to have to up it to 150 bucks and call it AirPods. <laughs> That's funny. I had, A lot of people kind of make fun of AirPods, and I kind of want to pair myself because they just seem very handy and effective. Nah. Fuck those people. I'll fight them. <laughs> like, dude, AirPods, AirPods are, other than like a phone, pound for pound, they're the best piece of tech I've ever bought. Like, I have a pair of Beats or whatever. Like, the, sure, the sound quality is probably better. But like, these things, like, as a Bluetooth, are, hands-free talking, I need these motherfuckers, right? Like, hands-free talking is everything. And these have no quality loss. And they don't look like a big retarded Bluetooth. And... You know, so I, I wear – they're in my ears 12 hours a day, dude. Like best thing I've ever bought. That's awesome. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great answer. Okay. What is something that you believe in that other people would think is crazy if you told them? Oh, Self-inflicted suffering. What do you mean by that? Just like putting yourself it's through hell to – Putting yourself through hell to grow. I agree with that. I mean, <clears throat> from a physical aspect, the gym I go to every single day, I get there. I'm like, this is going to suck. And then you go through it and you're like, I want to die. I don't want to be here. Like I sent Andre a picture. I did like 650 calories in like 38 minutes. I was like, wow, I just saw Jesus. Like, and then once you're done, you just feel like you, once you're done, like you go home and shower, you're like, wow, I feel amazing. I can't wait to go back. Like every day you just like keep putting yourself through and eventually it just becomes habit and you end up being addicted to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the play, dude. Definitely. All right, last one here. You got to leave an impact on our interview here. What message would you put on a billboard for the whole world to see? Okay, so I, I do like answering this question, but then I have to give an explanation. So for me, like if I needed to see something on the billboard, I like fuck it, nothing matters. That's what I want there. Because and here's what I here's what I mean by that. Like people get so wrapped up in what they have to do, and they put all these pressure pressure on themselves on these goals and all this shit, right? Like. Dude, just let go of the – like, it doesn't matter. You can – I don't care if you're fucking 45. You can completely fail. And you if you have the grit, you can pick back up and start again and be fine. Like, you, no matter what, like, unless you're going to commit suicide, the only logical step is to pick back up and try again, right? So what the fuck? Like – yeah. I have uh, one night me and my sweet mate got really into it with a conversation about like, why are you so stressed out about these superficial things? Like everything that you're like worried about, like college is like all man-made at the end of the day. Like you're just going to, I don't know, you're going to live your life and it's all going to work out based on how you carry yourself and then you're going to die. So don't worry. I don't know. It's hard yeah, to like. You, dude, you just choose how to receive things. Like the, who fucking cares about college or some stupid ass test? Like you woke, <laughs> you woke up. You have – you woke up being born in America. You have the ability to get up, work on your health, work on your mindset, be spiritual, build great relationships, and make a shit ton of cash. What the fuck is wrong? <laughs> yeah. So I mean like uh, – yeah. It's as hard so as it true. is sometimes so like – Sure, you like you're still gonna be stressed out about the current moment, but like another thing I do is like in five years, are you still gonna be worried about this? No, you're not even gonna remember what it was. So why are you worried about it now? That's just kind of how I try to cope with things that I'm worried about. Yeah, dude, I just remind myself that I'm not that important. Like I'm just some fucking dude from the Midwest. Like there's like a, a million stars in the galaxy and shit. Like I don't, it doesn't matter, right? Like it's fine. That's awesome. That's a, that's a great way to end the interview. <laughs> Um, like obviously we only had 40 
some odd minutes with you today. And I mean, even for myself, it, it wasn't enough. So for our listeners out there, like how could they reach out to you, uh, maybe enroll to be one of your students, anything like that, you feel free to promote whatever you do here. Yeah. So, you know, the best place to reach out to me is on Instagram at Brody Kern, B-R-O-D-I-E-K-E-R-N. Uh, from there, you can find links to my podcast. You can find links to other interviews that I've done, uh, articles. You can find information about my, my coaching business, uh, Wake Up Wealthy and the brotherhood that surrounds it. Uh, it's all really on Instagram. You know, I try to get into my DMs and be as interactive as I can, you know, two to three times a week. I try to catch up on everybody. So feel free to hit me up, dude. Like I, I will support at whatever capacity I can uh, for what my time and life allows. Like I'm, I'm here to help.